Okay, here we're going to be investigating the vertebral column. Now, the picture here, we may think of this as the vertebral column, and it is, but only this portion. The pelvis is actually also included in this image, which is not part of the vertebral column. We're going to learn about the different sections and why it has the curves and be able to identify different regions and also some potential spinal issues that may occur. So starting with it, this vertebral column is formed by 26 irregular bones called vertebrae, and they're connected in such a way that's flexible curved structure that results in the cervical vertebrae, these are the ones on top, the thoracic cat, uh, vertebrae, which is located here, the lumbar vertebrae, and then the sacrum down here. Now it's important to have these uh, bends and curves in the vertebrae, even though we may think of it as a solid straight line, uh, it's actually not the case. We have posteriorly concave curvatures of the cervical and the lumbar. And remember, um, concave, our lenses are shaped like this. And the convex curvatures of the thoracic and the sacral. Uh, here's our thoracic, here's our sacral, and that is in the convex curve. This kind of relates that same image uh, to the human body, so you can get an idea of where these are located in the general size comparison of these. The reason why these curves are important is it helps increase the strength and also the flexibility of the spine. Um, here's the um, curvature again kind of shown and also showing again that vertebral column in the different regions. So our thoracic vertebrae located here <clears throat> and here's our thoracic curve. Now two special ones are what's called C1 and C2. C1 is so special it actually has its own name. It's called the atlas. That's the very first one here. It holds the head up, and it's totally unique in that it's considered the yes joint. So when you're making the yes movement, that's because of the C1. That's the bending that occurs there. C2 directly below that is called the axis. And this is the joint between the C1 and the C2. It's called the no joint. And that's the one that works in this way. So one vertebrae is responsible for this kind of rotating motion, and C1 is responsible for this motion, the up and down, the yes, and the no joint. Um, I'm not going to have you identify those in an x-ray that can be difficult, but just remember C1 is the atlas responsible for the yes, and C2 is the axis responsible for the no joint. Now the typical structure of a vertebrae is here, and I'm not going to quiz you necessarily in all the details of it. But I do want to draw your attention to some names that you should be becoming familiar with. Posterior and anterior. This allows you to orient yourself um, where this is located. Remember, posterior is totally on the back. So this anterior would be po pointing more towards the center portion of the body. Our superior view is looking you know, straight down. And again, we see here our posterior, our true back, and our anterior portion here. So again, be familiar with these terms so you can orient yourself um, with different bone structures and when you go into dissections also. Uh, the discs within the vertebrae here, we have some cartilage, and it's important that we have that cartilage to act as kind of a cushion between the two discs. We don't want to have bone on bone, it's going to be extremely painful. Uh, we want to have that slight give there, and that's possible by the discs made of cartilage located between the two vertebrae. Remember our lateral view and our superior view, that should help you orient where this is. And this cartilage is providing padding. It's allowing movement within the vertebrae, so you can twist and turn without feeling massive pain. Uh, regional characteristics of the vertebrae. Again, I'm not going to spend a ton of time in having you identify one vertebrae of what particular region it might be located in. I just want you to realize that there are different regions. And here we see the cervical vertebrae. These are the ones on the top. Remember our C1 and our C2, our yes and our no, our atlas and our axis. You can see them labeled here again. Working our way down, our thoracic vertebrae, you can see that they're shaped a little differently, and they have this curve to them. They're supporting the thoracic cavity. Working way further down, our lumbar vertebrae, getting a little bit larger because, again, we have more weight to kind of hold up and support. And lastly, at the very end here, um, our sacrum and our coxal vertebrae at the very bottom here. So they're kind of fused together. They're not really independent and separate, and they can't really move like the other ones can. Um, we have our anterior view and our posterior view. So again, that should help you orient these. Types of spinal cord injuries. Uh, so spinal cord injuries are catastrophic injuries that may permanently alter lives of about 282,000 U.S. citizens. 
depending where that spinal cord injury occurs, can determine the percent of the body or portion of the body that becomes paralyzed. The key take-home message here is the further up that damage occurs, the greater portion of the body that becomes affected. So if it's affecting the lower region here, we see it's just the legs, it occurs up here towards the cervical um, vertebrae region, there's a much larger portion that becomes paralyzed. Some abnormal spine curvatures, uh, scoliosis might be most familiar with, abnormal lateral curve in the spine, um, kephaosis, which is a hunchback kind of look, we see kind of here, very exaggerated, and lordosis is sway back, um, or we have that kind of typically occurs uh, with pregnant uh, females that have this kind of odd bend to their spine. Again, both of these are referring to um, the bending looking at it from the side. Here we're seeing that kind of left to right um, curvature of the spine. Now scoliosis can be corrected. Here's a, a brace that can help reduce the degree of curvature from that left to right, and it can help correct that and allow that individual to live a closer to normal life. Lastly, damage to the invertebral um, discs is cause a slipped disc or herniated disc, both extremely painful. And we see here we have that kind of pinched in of the nerve. So never do we want our nerves to be pinched, never do we want bone on bone. And in this case, it's going to be an extremely uh, painful um, occurrence for this individual. Especially occurs typically here, indicated in the lower back, the lumbar spine. Um, a lot of weight is uh, applied here. There's a lot of support that's occurring. And this kind of um, pinched nerve can cause a lot of pain for the individual. That's why it's very important to have um, the cartilage at a nice equal spacing for the vertebrae and not pinching any of the nerves to allow freedom of movement without a high degree of pain.